Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. It's time to do a little exhaust work on the, on the uh, 96 Mercury Mystique. It has 286,000 miles and the original pipe here is actually in, I would say, fantastic shape. You can see the hangers are mint. They're stainless steel, not like some of today's cars where they rust off in a few years. Uh, the pipe itself is fine. The problem here is in the center muffler, the shell is just obviously seen better days and it's starting to leak and just be loud in general. So if you go to a muffler shop, they'll just replace you know all this stuff with cheap, crappy aftermarket components that in our climate don't last more than three or four years. And I don't want to do this job every three or four years. So, what I'm going to try to do, I went to Amazon and bought a 2x2 two two foot sheet of 304 stainless. Now this is 16 gauge. And I'm going to cut it and weld it. Just make a new shell around this center muffler. And for this project we're using the Cobra Torch the DHC 2000. Uh, I've used it a few times uh, but this is a very versatile piece of equipment not like your regular torch it actually runs on low pressure just four pounds of acetylene and oxygen and it comes with a whole assortment of tips and you know cutting attachments uh, you can weld or cut any metal with this torch it is really amazing so we're gonna try it on stainless Today we're going to cut the sheet to fit that muffler and then I'm just going to weld it and wrap it around and see how it goes. Um, it does come with a nice instructional video so we can watch a few minutes of that just to see what we're up against. So for cutting stainless, I guess, this torch isn't ideal. So we're just going to use a grinder and cut this thing off and then practice welding on the leftover piece. Alright, let's watch how to weld the stainless. Now we're ready to weld some stainless steel. This right here is just some regular 304 stainless. We can weld from very thin stainless up to about a quarter inch on stainless. It's such a hard alloy. Also, when you're welding stainless right here, if you've got two pieces butted together, you're going to get a little distortion. So we highly recommend about a sixteenth up to a one eighth gap when you're welding your stainless. I've got just a couple 304 stainless steel pieces right here. So we give ourselves just a little bit of a gap. Also, I'm using just a 316 stainless steel TIG rod. You don't have to use any flux or anything, just a standard TIG. Now, a lot of you aircraft guys, we give you some different numbers on some of your aluminum, some of your stainless, and your mild steel. All that is in the instructional book. Now, also, with stainless steel, this is the only metal that we actually have to use a different type flame. We use a neutral flame on everything but stainless. Just to show you what we're doing, you can actually adjust it with either one of your oxyacetylene knobs right here. But we need just a little bit more settling. Anytime you have a little feather sticking out like that, that's always what they call a carburizing flame, a little hmm. bit more settling. The longer that cone is, the actual, uh, the longer it is, actually the cooler it is. All right, so we run it out there about twice the length as that little inner cone right there, and that's not critical, that's approximate. But you can see that little cone on the inside, so we still weld with the little inner cone. And the reason we do that, if you get any oxygen at all in that stainless, you crystallize it, make it very brittle and weak. So that's like a little added shield. So not the outer feather, but that little small inner cone right there. Also, I'm going to show you just a little easier way to weld with it. All I'm doing right here is actually just holding that rod right in the puddle. 
taking that little small cone, walking right up the rod, washing it right back in the puddle. Now I actually keep that rod pushed right into the puddle right there. Taking that little small cone, walking up the rod in small, slow increments. People, for some reason, want to try and weld too fast with it. And all you'll do is just give yourself a lot of high and low peaks. Actually, watch that puddle spreading out. Just take that little cone, walk up the rod, wash it back into the puddle, and make sure it's melting. If you're welding stainless to stainless or stainless to any other metal, we tell you in the book just to use that carburizing flame right there. Hmm. Now, stainless will clean up very nice. You always have a little discoloration to it, no matter what you weld it with. Now, if you look real close right there, you can also see we give you 100% penetration. 100% penetration. <laughs> That looks pretty neat. Let's see if we can dial this in on our sheet. Alright, so I just cut a slit with the grinder. Let's uh, fire up the torch. Now I just have one tip installed. The, the, the one, number one tip. And I'm going to go this way. Start here, close this gap, and then try to fill in this gap as best we can. So that's neutral flame. We want flame with a cone. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Whew. I gotta say that works pretty nicely. So I'm gonna practice a little more and then we'll start welding this sheet to each side of the muffler. So we'll start on the flat side and just kind of weld, weld and start covering it around. See how that goes. So we're gonna start right here. There's our sheet and I'll start with this edge. Let's see if we need to elevate it anymore. We could, just so it starts flat, because this is going to wrap around, overlap, and then we're going to weld all the way across. All right, so here's the start. Actually, it looks very nice. And uh, we'll start bending the sheet of metal around and just either tack it and then go all the way around but I don't know it's uh, it's looks like it's definitely fusing to whatever this is I'm assuming this is like 409 this is 304 this should last even longer all right so I did a little tack weld here in the middle so the sheet doesn't try to lift up and it's curling around I got two clamps so next spot is gonna be right here and right here and then uh, we'll just keep going and then finally do the whole perimeter. All right, let's do the other side of the muffler right here. All right, it's getting there. Now we'll just keep wrapping the sheet metal and welding it in place. 
So this plate is pretty thick and it's not that easy to bend. Just trying to get it more or less into shape. So I can probably put clamps around it somewhere around here and just tap it into place so we can weld the next point. All right, so here's the progress so far. I have the piece of sheet metal tack welded all the way around on both sides. So now what I want to do is actually <clears throat> complete the full weld up to here, and then we'll use the grind wheel to cut this off, kind of <clears throat> bang it into place, and hopefully it'll make a nice seam. We have to clamp it down, but this is looking promising. All right, we're getting there. So I welded it all the way around, so there, now I just want to cut off the remains here, about four inches with the grinder, hammer this flush, and then weld the seam. That should be good to go. Alright, so the remains are ground off, and then I cut a little stress relief here so I can hammer the outer piece here tighter to <clears throat> the sheet metal, and then we're just going to weld along there. Finish up the sides, and this thing should be, you know, that, that's beautiful. All right, one last little piece, so. Hammer that down. Sweet. There it is. So all the welds look, I don't know, as long as they don't let, <laughs> let any uh, leaks through, then they shouldn't rust, which is amazing. So I guess we'll put the pipe back on the car, see how it works. So I'm checking the whole pipe. For leaks and on the muffler here only two small pinholes so under a little pressure there's a small pinhole there one in the corner I say this side looks pretty good. Right there. Right there. Let's weld those up.